Hi, this is Bill Wong. I'm speaking with Neil Johnson of Proceris Technologies, and we're going to be talking about their Kestrel Autopilot system. Could you tell us a little bit about uh, the company first? Certainly. Uh, Proceris has been around about seven or eight years now. Uh, we started by uh, miniaturizing our autopilot to make it an affordable autopilot for small UAVs, which led to the development of our 2X autopilot. That autopilot is capable of flying fixed-wing vehicles. Recently, we've been expanding that capability. We developed a new autopilot with more horsepower. We call it the 3X. Uh, still the Kestrel family, and it's capable of flying vehicles like these, uh, quad rotor vehicles and other helicopters. Now, what kind of processor is this uh, actually running on? The smaller, older version is using a, a 29 megahertz 8-bit processor. The newer one is running a 500 megahertz DSP, much more capable. Now, what are some of the uh, support that the autopilot is going to be able to provide? In other words, what type of uh, programming uh, do you do to uh, get it to go to waypoints, things of that nature? Uh, the autopilots have a range of capabilities from full pilot in control to full computer in control. Uh, at the pilot in control level, the pilot can take over at any time in case they see something that the computer might not catch or if they just want to take control, they can do that. And on the other side, if they want to have the computer be in control, they have a preset set of waypoints they can reconfigure at any time and they have a ground control station with a nice convenient map interface that lets them track the progress of the vehicle. It includes auto takeoff, auto land, and waypoint navigation capabilities. Could you tell us a little bit about the ground station software? Certainly. Uh, our ground station has been undergoing some makeovers. Uh, in, in the past we've used a, a 2D map environment um, and we've recently upgraded that to be a, a full 3D mapping interface. It downloads the maps from a variety of online sources and you're able to pan and tilt and tilt and move the map around as much as you like. Um, and the GPS you know, recenters you to be able to show and track the vehicle's progress. We're here with Reed Christensen. He's going to be telling us a little bit more about how the Kestrel integrates with some of the VTOL uh, products we see around here. Could you sort of tell us what some of these are and uh, how the system actually integrates with them? Sure. So uh, we make autopilots that work with most VTOL systems and uh, we are airframe agnostic in that we try to make our autopilot compatible with uh, anybody's setup. We provide GUI and user interface so that they can configure the autopilot for their particular setup. So here we have two example airframes. They're made by a company called Cyber Technology out of Australia. They're ducted VTOL. Um, and uh, they work really well indoors and outdoors. Uh, do you want me to pick one up and show sure. you how it looks inside? So basically the autopilot is the heart of, uh, of these vehicles. Uh, it controls the motors, uh, it receives signals from the GPS, and it controls the camera payload. So uh, just to show you how it works, so uh, this is our autopilot. It's the Kestrel 3 autopilot. It has a uh, 500 megahertz DSP on board, and it's running control loops at 300 hertz. So that means it takes the signals from the GPS and from the sensors, and at 300 times a second, it calculates a new motor input for each motor. And it does that to keep the vehicle level and keep it at the right location, at the right altitude. Obviously, the autopilot is central to the UAV, and you see the wires spanning out from there. So the first stop is the magnetometer up here. We like to keep the magnetometers far away from the motors as they have magnets in them. And as they commutate, they create magnetic interference. So we move the magnetometer as far forward as possible. On the autopilot itself, we have three, three gyros. They're um, located orthogonal, orthogonal as to uh, get rates on each of the axes. Here we have two air data sensors. That's the altitude sensor, and this is the airspeed sensor. On a lot of VTOLs, we don't use the airspeed, but on fixed-wing airplanes, uh, uh, that's an important sensor. Uh, this metal can encases the uh, Blackfin DSP. Uh, we use the can because in small vehicles often the GPS is located very close to the processor so the can keeps the, the 
emissions inside the, the autopilot. Um, here are the power wires. Each one of these motors can consume up to 10 amps of current, so we have relatively thick wires. Uh, then that's the coax to the antenna, which is out here. And then this is the RC receiver, so we can receive low latency pilot commands from uh, your normal uh, radio controlled console. Uh, this is just a, a bigger vehicle. This vehicle can carry more payload, it can stay up a little longer. You can always exchange payload uh, for more battery. So uh, this, this provides a little more flexibility. It's a little bit bigger, it's a little bit more expensive, but it can stay up longer, it can carry bigger things. And one of the advantages of, of bigger things is you can get into these uh, uh, consumer HD payloads. Uh, this is a, a 1080p camera with a 12 megapixel still uh, with optical stabilization. So we get great video out of that. We also send the video down through a downlink over here in addition to recording it on board. And as you see, here's a an interface camera, a cable to the camera, so our autopilot can send Sony link commands to the, to the camera to start and stop recording, take a still shot, or zoom in and out. So it gives us a little more flexibility than just, uh, than just flying the camera around. Excellent. So if uh, people would like to find out more about the Kestrel software and hardware, uh, where can they find it online? They can go to our website, ProcerisUAV.com and uh, we have lots of videos and uh, tech sheets where they can learn more. Thanks very much. All right.